Have you heard of the Russian scientist who injected himself with a 3.5 million year old bacteria? For fun? On a dare? For science? For science. Oh, okay, good. So this Russian scientist named Dr. Anatoly Brokstok, he was they're digging in the permafrost in the tundra in Siberia, and they discovered this bacteria that was so far down in the permafrost, it like went past like the woolly mammoths. But guess what? This bacteria was still living. Oh no. But they tested this bacteria on mice, on plants, and the mice and plants lived way longer in the crop. They didn't die as fast when it was cold outside. They're calling it the elixir of life. They're saying that this thing could contribute to people, animals, and plants all living longer than they should. There's a town pretty close to where they found this bacteria, and the people of this town in Siberia live like way longer than all the other people in the region. And so he was basically like, well, I want to try it on myself. He's still alive? Still alive. I'm assuming they recorded that episode during Halloween. But anyway, let's, let's delve into what they're claiming here. The, the first is that uh, ancient, you know, 3.5 billion year old bacteria was recovered from the ice and that it was reanimated. The bacteria was alive. Is that plausible? And the answer is, yeah, uh, that happens. The oldest bacteria that we've collected from and reanimated from the ice is 8 million years old. So 3.5 million years old bacteria is plausible. But the, the core claim here is that this bacteria uh, is somehow causing life extension in mice and crops and possibly in people. So the, the Russian researcher injected himself with it. That's a very implausible claim uh, because, you know, what would, the, what would the mechanism be? You know, life extension is not an easy thing. So, but, you know, I can't say that it's impossible because we know nothing about it. We don't, you know, it... It makes it much less plausible if it's in like plants and animals because that would have to be wildly different biological mechanisms or something really fundamental. So it does, that makes less sense. But maybe he's, you know, you could say maybe he's wrong about the plants, but he was right about the mice or whatever. Um, so we can't say for 100 percent sure. It's just a highly implausible claim. But the other thing is this is all coming from one researcher, right? This has never been replicated. So we, until something is replicated in science, it's basically not real. It hasn't been verified. We cannot take it as a given. If he were onto something, you would think that we would see some replications, that, that other researchers would, would pick up the ball and would carry it forward, or that he would be able to convince other researchers that he was onto something. He's still, still around, still alive, this guy, by publishing papers that are convincing. Um, but that's not happening. We see this all the time where you have one researcher making highly implausible claims that does not get replicated, does not convince the research community that there's anything real going on. And those things almost never pan out. Uh, the probability that there's anything real going on here, therefore, is very small. But if there were, just, you know, could do some real compelling science and start to convince people. We're just not seeing that happen.